If there's one thing our planet desperately needs, it's people to be able to connect with their natural world and their heritage. And we try and do that with everything we do here in Tumbler Ridge. Tumbler Ridge is a beautiful, remote little community of just 3,000 people in northeastern British Columbia. It's British Columbia's youngest, therefore newest community. It was created out of nothing in the early 1980s entirely because of the metallurgical coal that occurs here. And we've been through huge ups and downs with coal mines coming and closing and coming and closing. We've got a fairly big UNESCO Global Geopark. It's about 8,000 square kilometers. And there are two arms that have allowed us to get this covered to designation. The one is 100 kilometers of hiking trails that go to these beautiful geological sites, all with a geological story to tell. And the other one is the Tumbler Ridge Museum Foundation with the Peace Region Paleontology Research Center with all the dinosaur and other fossil heritage which we have discovered here. In Tumbler Ridge, we have the Dinosaur Discovery Gallery. And this is where we showcase all of the great fossils that we've collected in the Peace Region. And we also have examples of Tumbler Ridge's favorite, the Ankylosaur, the armored dinosaur. We have several footprints of that out on display. And we also have on display a very small sample from our Tyrannosaur trackway. It's the world's only Tyrannosaur trackway, and we have just enough room to fit one of the footprints into one of the cabinets for people to see, and it is a massive footprint. I got involved with uh, Tumblr Ridge uh, as a result of two boys finding a trackway. That led to the discovery of a dinosaur excavation site, the first dinosaur bones in British Columbia. That's how we built the museum, is be because of those bones. Everyone was predicting ghost town status for us. It was such a serendipitous discovery, and as a dad, I just realized, you know, maybe the kids have got an opportunity to do something cool here. The public component of the museum is the tip of the iceberg, so the, the collection is really massive. It is the only type of collection of its kind in the province of British Columbia. So where we're standing right now is the collections facility for the Peace Region Paleontology Research Center. So this is the fossil archives for the area. So all of the fossils that we go out into the field and we collect, we bring them back here and we clean them up and then we do all of the studies on them and this is where they get stored. I want people to look at paleontology and fossils specifically and not just say, oh, it's just some dusty old bone on a shelf. I want them to be in awe of this millions of years old specimen that they're looking at and go, wow, that is part of our past. This is part of my story. I want people to get more connected with paleontology. I think with paleontology in Tumblr Ridge, we have now reached a critical mass. In the early days, our future was not by any means secure, but I think our reputation has grown and spread to such a degree that we can now speculate, you know, where are we going to be? Uh, we, we need to be internationally recognized. We've got a dinosaur bone bed, which we cannot excavate without funding. Currently, we know there are at least four dinosaurs there. We've got six thigh bones, but with some funding, there might be 100, 200, 300 dinosaurs right there. The only Tyrannosaur trackways in the world, they lead into a, a small cliff. With the backhoe and a bobcat, if you could get those there with funding, take off the overburden. Can you imagine Tyrannosaur trackways that just go on and on and on? What an international draw card that would be. I know that what we're doing here is not just provincially or nationally important, but it's internationally significant stuff, and heritage is critical. The track site that we're currently working on is near Hudson's Hope, uh, just south of the Williston Reservoir. It was discovered in 2008 by a local person named Barry Moreau. As we rode by on the quad, we noticed this exposed slab of rock with strange depressions in it that, that seemed to be indicating a pattern of footsteps. When we jumped off the quad and walked over and looked is when we really discovered that, yes, they were dinosaur tracks. These footprints are 115 million years old, so we're dealing with early Cretaceous dinosaurs. 
we're in the beginning stages, but we've already found about nine or 10 different track types. So we have the footprints of large, medium, small theropods. Those are the meat-eating dinosaurs. We have a few size ranges of plant-eating dinosaurs, the ornithopods, and we have at least one sauropod trackway. And we may have possibly the traces of uh, things like birds and maybe some other smaller animals like that. The plan this year is to excavate as much of the 6,000 square meter area as possible. The very first thing that we do is we have to clean off the site. We have to get all of the extra crud off of the surface. The step two is once we've uncovered the surface is to give it the big brush off. So we sweep all of the debris off of the surface so that we have a nice clean slate to work with. They all weren't on the surface at the same time. We can tell that because of the differences in preservation. So it wasn't one big dinosaur stampede, but just a fairly dense amount of trackways being built up, just a number of dinosaurs walking across, and then some more walking across a little later, and then some after that. Now that's the type of thing that we're gonna, we're gonna be looking at and seeing if we can determine what the sequence was, like which ones came first, which ones came second, which directions they were going in. Was a particular group of dinosaur, did they have a preferred sort of orientation? Were they heading somewhere specific or is it all random? For the past week, we've had visitors from many different parts of the world. These are all people who are interested in various aspects of dinosaur footprints, and especially early Cretaceous dinosaur footprints. So we form an international dinosaur footprint team, so we're working on various aspects of the site. I thought when we got here, we'd see one or two or three or four footprints uh, and then we'd be, you know, think this is great. We're up to 800 footprints already and in the last week uh, we've exposed, you know, I think a few hundred ourselves. This is authentic dinosaur action. I'm totally blown away. I didn't think I'd ever see anything like this and just the diversity of different animals that are here, the different types. Hey guys, I got two ornithopods here that kind of, um, turn in unison. Ooh. Ooh. Somebody once said that fossil footprints are the nearest thing we have to movies of dinosaurs. And I like to tease my friends who study bones and say, you're studying death, destruction, decay, putrefaction. We're studying the living, dynamic, athletic animal. This one comes down here. I thought that was a theropod at first, but it's not. And then it's here, here, here. The three-dimensional data set that I'll produce from the work I do here at this track site can be thought of kind of as a base layer. And from that, we can look at which animal walk across the surface first. We can look at how the footprints are connected into trackways. From making those measurements, we can estimate how fast the animals were going. One of the standard things we say about footprints is that they represent the animals that actually came into this area. Sometimes if you find a dinosaur skeleton, it may have been washed hundreds of miles down a river, uh, it may have been scavenged and transported around. You don't know how representative it is. On July 8th, we had an unveiling of the dinosaur track site. And this was to raise awareness of paleontology resources that are in the Peace Region, and specifically this site. Thank you to everybody for, for coming. And uh, we're going to be working on this site probably until uh, mid to late August. So anybody that feels like coming out and uh, just checking out the site or working with us, you're more than welcome. We have this wonderful opportunity, not just for paleontology heritage protection, but also to combine that with tourism, because this is one of the few sites that people can actually visit that shows a whole lot of dinosaur footprints on one surface. We've had this area exposed. This was the area where tracks were first found. And of course, we're saying that we want to expose all the way up to the trees. But you know, when we bring people here, they're like, well, how do you know there's tracks up there? So we excavated a little area, and now we have the proof. So let's go take a look. Exploration. With this current track site that we're working on, we're not discouraging the public from visiting. It's not something that we're advertising, but we're quite happy to show them around and it's nice to see how enthusiastic they are about what's out here. Invertebrates often put most of their, carry most of their weight on the inside, on their instep. What we'd love to 
have happened for this surface is for a lovely building to be put over it, a nice interpretive center, and to have the track's story told, to uh, have wonderful displays inside and be able to share this site with everyone who comes to the area. It's fascinating because these are animals that just aren't here anymore, but they left such a huge impact on our planet. And they were just like any other animal that was around today, all the cougars and the moose and the bears, and interacting with their environment and leading their lives and having their impacts and just being able to tell their story and be part of preserving them and making that story available to the public. It's humbling and a great honor all at the same time. My hope for the future is that I'll get to see a number of museums in British Columbia built that have more of a paleontological focus and that this interest in paleontology becomes ingrained in the society of all British Columbians, that there's an awareness that there isn't now.